Hello everyone, this is Lockout S, and welcome back to Star Citizen for Invictus uh, launch week. This uh, week, uh, well this day of the week rather, we have Anvil Aerospace, the uh, second uh, major manufacturer of ships for the military for Star Citizen. So, let's go uh, into it. Interestingly enough, there's actually quite a, there's not that many ships as uh, Aegis, on display. Uh, that is simply because a lot of the uh, ships here are relatively uh, small, so thankfully we'll be able to quickly just buzz by them. So we have these two hulls here, and then we have a lot also that Anvil has that's currently in development. Let's start off, since these two hulls are sealed, To start off with the Arrow. Arrow is a uh, light fighter in the vein of uh, the, uh, it's a kind of a, it's a very close competitor to the uh, Aegis Gladius. The Anvil Arrow is a uh, newer design. It focuses more on guns. There's uh, two guns on the um, these inboard pylons, and then it has actually a turret up top instead of on the nose, and it's a uh, twin mount turret. So there's four guns. Um, now, granted, the guns on the upper turret are, I believe, only size ones. Uh, they're very small guns on the uh, top turret, though. Either size ones or twos. And then there's a uh, missile pylon, and there's uh, then uh, missile pylons on the wingtips. So you do actually have, so you also do have some missile uh, armament there on the anvil arrow. It's a competitor to the uh, Gladius, uh, but otherwise, they're pretty similar. Uh, all around, it's uh, they're not vastly different. Going over, oh, I can actually go ahead and head out this way, so it'll miss this. This is the one of my favorite um, VF uh, air, uh, spaceships in the game, although it's kind of been sort of long, long forgotten. It's the uh, Anvil. Uh, Gladiator. This is a light bomber, and it is very much. It is was basically CIG's very first missile boat in game. There are kind of a bit of uh, problems with the ship, uh, namely the fact that as the pilot, uh, you cannot have the turret up there slaved to you if no one sits in that uh, ball turret up top. So that used to be something that had, the ship had, and then they got rid of it. Other than that, it is very much a primarily a missile armament ship. You have these large pylons on the wingtip, and these are each a size three uh, pylon. So you have four uh, size three pylons, and the default armament is uh, two size twos per pylon. So you have eight size two missiles as standard, and then you have uh, two guns that the pilot has. In addition to that, down below here, if it'll open, and I'm crawling because it's that low to the ground. It's not, yeah. Sometimes you can't open these up too easily because, um, yeah, it's not giving me access to it. Yeah. Um, over here, where this uh, cutout bay is right here, this is actually a torpedo bay. And the, that's where the main armament of this uh, ship comes in, with four uh, size five torpedoes. So this is very much a torpedo bomber, not a ground bomber. It's very much a um, torpedo bomber with four size five torpedoes, plus the eight size two missiles. So this is very much a uh, missile-focused uh, ship. And unfortunately, as I've uh, said multiple times throughout this year's Invictus, Missiles are kind of bugged, but it is still a pretty cool ship. Uh, once missiles do come in, um, def uh, once missile uh, improvements come in, I'm definitely going to be flying this ship quite a bit, especially if it gets a gold pass, and you can kind of tell the textures it needs it. And really, the other thing about the ship that's pretty cool is that for a um, relatively small, compact uh, fighter bomber, for a, well, a um, light bomber, it does actually have a, a turret up top. That can uh, be a pretty useful for self either for um, in the self protection role, where you can use it to uh, ward off enemy fighters, or the turret can even 
join in and attack your main target with additional uh, firepower from those two guns. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend it in its current state, but this is a ship that I would keep an eye out for, especially if you do enjoy um, using missiles, or if you actually have, or if you're actually part of an org and you need a uh, light bomber. It's a, uh, because of its more balanced armament of the larger guns, and more of them, including the turret, plus a wider range of missiles, I think that's a the uh, Gladiator there is a better bet than the um, Eclipse, just because you have more a wider range and depth of um, ammo and weapons. And Volcaric, the infamous classic from CIG, definitely a ship that people love, and I love mine very much, but it's very much a ship that you really, I mean, you can theoretically operate this solo in theory, but it's a stretch. I mean, I've flown this around many a times solo, but it's a fun ship. I do enjoy it. Um, I just wish that, again, my, like I always mentioned, uh, some of these ships like the Carrick, you do need crew to make them effective, and it's sometimes hard to actually uh, get crew to man them, and you can't always necessarily count on your friends, because sometimes your friends will base, will like, uh, they're, they're never on when you're on, so... Until we get more people, until the servers come a little bit bigger and it's more reliable, it's more easier to uh, get crew. Can't really recommend this ship. Uh, I can't really recommend buying this ship with in with real life money. But if you love it, you'll love it. There's definitely a lot of good sides to it. So, also keep in mind that the cargo uh, bay doesn't open up to the outside world. Unfortunately, they have yeah uh, they have to work through they have to redo the cargo bay to like. Uh, make it more functional for what the current cargo gameplay is like. But still a fun ship, beautiful bridge, beautiful rooms in there, lots of fun. Also, it has a small hangar bay for these ships, and that is the Pisces. Now, theoretically, the carrot could carry any small vehicle, but it was pretty much designed with the Pisces in mind. And there are two Pisces variants here. There's your standard ver uh, garden variety Pisces. And then there's the Pisces uh, Medical, the C8R, and I do believe this is actually the C8X. So, while this is technically the Garden Variety Pisces, I should mention that this is the Premium uh, Standard Pisces. Uh, basically, the Premium version of the Pisces has a bit more gun, uh, a bit more armament on it as compared to the standard Pisces, and that's all that really is to it. That's all there really is, is just that the premium version has more fire, a little bit more firepower, so it can be using a little bit more of an offensive capability for protecting the mothership, or for getting out of trouble, or for attacking ground units. The medical Pisces is a really cool small ambulance ship. It's basically um, the Ursa Medivac of the sky, and honestly, it was this ship uh, that inspired uh, CAG probably then to do an Ursa uh, medevac, uh, just because it's, again, a very small utility ship, or a very small utility vehicle in general, that you can then uh, use to pick up a single patient and get them out of trouble. So, pretty cool. The This does actually mesh up with the Carrick pretty well because the Carrick actually has uh, more advanced medical facilities on board. So using a C8, so having a C8R with your Carrick isn't actually all that bad. Over here we have two ships that don't quite have all their functionality in game. The Anvil Hawk is supposed to be a, basically a bounty hunter specific uh, focused ship. And it's also, kind of useful in the air to ground role. There are six guns on the Hawk, and as well as an EMP. And this rear seat here, by the way, is, if it comes out, is it out or not? It's not showcasing. It might, they might have disabled that. Let's see here. I want to see something. Oh, that is the seat. Okay, yeah. 
I believe that is the seat. So basically this is a prisoner um, transport area back here. And you literally load your prisoner back up there. And then And then they uh, get pulled into the uh, Anvil Hawk's uh, tail, where they are secured. Other than that, um, since game, since bounty hunting mechanics aren't really in yet, uh, the ship doesn't really have a lot of purpose. I don't even really see them out in the verse a whole lot. Uh, they are cool looking, but, but until bounty hunting mechanics come in that are uh, more of a uh, capture of the bounty rather than just outright kill them, this doesn't really have too much purpose in the verse. Unfortunately, uh, one of my favorite ships, the Anvil Terrapin, has even less use because scanning and uh, recon and exploration gameplay isn't really in yet, but there it is, Anvil uh, Terrapin. It's a very, uh, unlike most ships, and uh, unlike uh, most other like uh, exploration ships and or things like that, the Anvil Terrapin is very much focused on being the most heavily armored ship in its uh, size group. So this is very much focusing on armor to to get into and out, uh, to get it out of trouble. And you have a pilot seat here on the front. And you have a uh, radome station, right? Uh, you have basically a radar operator, a sensor operator back here. And the car uh, the animal terrapin does actually have a small um, kitchen. It's like a microwave. Has a bed. Has a bathroom. Has component access, so this is a pretty cool ship. Very well armored, but unless you're doing some kind of like quote unquote recon role play or you're doing some kind of like search mission where your main priority is to find something, um, you really can't use the Arrow Animal Terrapin for too much. It also only has two guns for self defense, so your best bet is to use your armor to escape, use your armor and tough it out and escape, or if you do have an escort, uh, you can at least uh, stick it out in the fray a little bit and then maybe use those guns to assist uh, your escort in dealing with the threat. Because you are heavily armored, so you don't necessarily need to worry about being in a fight so long as someone else is dealing damage. And that's it all for the main show floor, I believe. Anvil Day is surprisingly later than I was expecting. Um, or really at this point remembering. Uh, there are, it's just Anvil, uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes they surprise, like sometimes, some of the uh, ship manufacturers, once you sit down and actually count through things, you actually realize just how few ships there are from a manufacturer. There might seem like a whole lot at one, at, uh, at certain times of the, of the year in the project, but that's very likely because you don't remember, uh, Eskers are probably like pushing it, pushing that ship to a manufacturer quite a lot. All right, here we go. These are the infamous uh, Hornet series as of late, and I say infamous because uh, there's a bit of drama now that the uh, Mark I is being retired from the online store and the in-game uh, store to purchase it with in-game currency. But this is the new Hornet Mark IIa. Has a bit more firepower than the original uh, Mark I Hornets. Uh, with uh, six guns, as opposed to the original Hornets, I believe only two, that came standard, but they had options to equip more. So already the standard Mark II A Hornet uh, stock comes with way more weapons, and that's the A version of the Mark II Hornet. The F seven C Mark II has only two guns, and it looks like a bunch of hard points. I wonder how much is this for available for rent. I want to see something real quick. Sandy check. This might be um, a NPC only ship, the Mark II uh, A, which is the uh, mil the A variant of these uh, ships are for like the mil other military variant. So that's the Mark II uh, Hornet A or the Mark. The F-7A Hornet Mark II for the military. The civilian, uh, uh, I want to say branded, the civilian version of the uh, 
Mark II Hornet. This is F7C Mark II. And this is a very interesting ship. This is the older uh, Hornet. And this is the uh, Anvil F7C Hornet Mark I. So you can see there's the Mark II right there. And this is the Mark I, the older Mark I series. Uh, this is this is what's being retired in favor of this. And I will say of the two, the newer one does look nicer. I just want to see because I just, out of curiosity, Okay, they at the very least made the cockpit look nicer. Still keeping those Anvil Hornet vibes, but made it look nicer. So at the very least, they also made the co uh, the cockpit look nicer. And I'll be honest, they probably uh, redid this ship because the F7C Hornet um, is uh, was one of CIG's oldest ships in game. So the fact that they redid it just from scratch and are now trying to soft retire the uh, Mark One makes sense. Also, if you've noticed, the the Mark I Hornet, if you've followed the project for a long time, has a bunch of different variants. From what I heard, the other Mark II, the Mark I variants, the Stealth, Recon, and the like, are going to get uh, Mark II variants uh, made in due time. The Anvil Valkyrie here is a ship that I will tell you to avoid like the plague. Not because it's a bad ship, but because the only reason you will uh, buy this ship is because you have a large group of people you play with, and the majority of them are FPS players. This is very much a dropship, and it's a dropship that can carry a metric ton of people, plus you need at least a crew, I would think, of a pilot and four gunners to really make the most use out of it because you have a gunner, you have a turret down below, a turret up above, and then you have these wing turrets on either side that also fire and uh, attack targets. Uh, nothing, and that's nothing to say of the two uh, surprise turrets that you have here on the door. So if you want door gunners, in addition to uh, the regular turret gunners, you need to pack an additional two people, at least. But we'll take a quick peek inside just to show you the insanity of it. And the cool thing is, is that there is a little spot in here for ground vehicles. So you can actually load up ground vehicles in here and then deploy them. I don't think it can carry a uh, tank, but it can carry quite a few uh, larger uh, of the larger ground vehicles. And you have your Gatling guns there. On either side for door gunners. And then you can literally see just like rows upon uh, seats upon seats upon rows of uh, drop seats for your infantry. Over here, there's, a older, uh, there's an older anvil ship design, the Hurricane. Hurricane's a very interesting ship. The pilot has access to only two of the guns, and the remainder other and the remaining four guns are located in a turret on the back. So this is very much a ship that you need a second player to play with. So do keep that in mind. Obviously, having a second needing only a second person to make full use of the ship is a lot better than say something like the uh, Valkyrie, which you need an entire like small squad to even crew the ship, let alone get enough people to actually drop into combat to make it worth taking out that ship, so there is that. A bit more reasonable, but I would definitely go with one of the um, F7C uh, Hornets, but the Hornet Mark IIs over this for right now, unless you know you have someone you can reliably play with. And then lastly, we have for display on the show floor, the uh, F7, the F8 Lightning.
This is a ship, by the way, that you cannot earn um, in-game. No, you cannot buy in-game unless you uh, played through the event that allows you to unlock it. So this is very much a uh, limited ship in all uh, senses of the word. It's lo it, I do believe it's loaded has changed. It now has more ballistic guns on the wings. And then it has two energy rip, uh, guns on the uh, towards the front. So six guns and I think it has a uh, ton of missiles. So this is supposed to be the uh, elite fighter of the Navy now. The uh, F-8 Lightning Heavy Fighter. And that's pretty much it for the uh, Lightning. And for everything in this room. Like I said, nothing too much. Anvil, at least currently in the verse, has a lot of fighters made for it. But a lot of their um, larger ships haven't come in yet. And that's it for the upper floor. Uh, we're now going to make our way to the bottom floor where there are the Hall of Viewers and the Anvil Grand Vehicles. And I do believe the Hall of Viewer does have quite a few treats for us uh, today. Ah, now I will say some of my favorite anvil designs are the Atlas platform ground vehicles. I would totally buy them. They look cool, and they actually seem pretty useful, except there is a bit of a warning with these, in that, as you can see, they are quite huge, and only a select few ships can actually carry these into battle. Now, the Drake, iron, uh, the Drake Ironclad that we recently got should be one of those ships that can carry multiple of these into battle. Uh, the other current uh, one that comes to mind is the C2 Hercules. So let's head in here. This is the uh, interior of the ballist of the uh, ballista. And this is actually going to share a very similar interior to the Centurion that we will showcase a bit in a bit later. The ballista is basically the SAM, uh, the, the uh, portable or mobile SAM system of uh, Star Citizen. I like to think of it for all of you DCS players that follow that uh, follow this channel. Think of it like an SA, yeah, an SA-8 OSA. It's pretty much uh, like that, where you have a bunch of missiles in the back, like a bunch of the Endos are, I do believe, uh, size 5 torpedoes in the back, which are a little bit faster torpedoes. And then you have two massive size nines when you need to take out a larger, a much larger vehicle. Plus, it does have a small turret up top that can be used to engage uh, light ground, uh, light, uh, light vehicles, infantry, other things like that. So you can def. It's definitely very much a SAM site for you're uh, defending your base or trying to keep um, people away from your uh, ground operations. Now, if you want something that's a bit more of an AA system rather than a uh, missile system, because you can run out of missiles really quick in this game, and like I've mentioned many times, you have to be careful of missiles until they get the missile tech in. We have the Centurion. Uh, very so It's basically the same interior as the Ballista, but instead of having a missile uh, turret and launching system in the back. They have these massive guns on a turret in the back, as well as an, uh, an additional pair of guns up top there. And basically, this is a giant AAA pl uh, platform. So you can think of this for, um, if you're a DCS player, you can think of this as like a uh, Shilka. Overall, this is, um, this is a bit more useful for dealing with fighters, although having all of those uh, large guns 
on this platform does mean that even if you're still a larger ship, you're definitely going to take some damage if you stay near this thing for too long. Or even if you glance by, you might get pretty chewed up, at least, at least with your shields. However, uh, one of my favorite vehicle, and the one I want to get in-game um, potentially someday, if I end up having a bit more of a larger crew to play with, is the Anvil Spartan. And the Spartan is the last of the uh, the latest of the Atlas platform series of vehicles. It has a much different interior. Like the Ballista, it has a twin Gatling gun turret up front, although this time its purpose is more meant for uh, helping to provide cover fire for the infantry that it carries because the Anvil Spartan is an APC. So you have a turret to provide, engage light, uh, air, light uh, uh, vehicles, use it to engage like vehicles like said light, light vehicles small spacecraft infantry it's pretty useful in like engaging those kind of targets which will which is good because uh that'll give at least your infantry a bit more of a fighting chance in t certain situations but again as you can see cockpit of the spartan and then you have your eight seats for your infantry in the back and the infantry in the back actually have these small windows that face into the outside world. Play the game on pauses. There we go. So you can actually have a little bit of a view into the outside world while you're uh, in this very well armored uh, tank. Well, not tank, but APC. And those are the ground vehicles. Now, keep in mind, all three of these Atlas platform chassis do require a very large ship in order to carry around. So make sure you uh, double check to uh, make sure you, if you want to buy one of these uh, ships or buy one of these uh, ground vehicles, make sure to go ahead and rent them for free for these uh, for the next two days. Pick your largest ship or the ship you want to transport them in, and then load up your plat load. Try to load this onto that ship. To make sure it'll fit because otherwise you're going to have to go around and try to see if you can't find a ship that'll fit these and you don't want to spend already more money than you um, are going to with these ships or these ground vehicles because they're already going to be spending quite a lot on these and the ships that could potentially carry them are even more money so you want to be careful with how much you don't want to get uh you don't want to get your spending uh running away from you Now we're going to go to the Hall of Viewers to wrap up today's tours. Anvil Liberator basically is a mini carrier. Uh, it can be used to either carry a bunch of ground vehicles or I believe they're aiming for you to carry up to three uh, fighter sized vehicles on the Liberator and then also use it as a mobile uh, landing uh, like a landing pad to rearm and refuel and repair. They said this was a ship that we were going to need for Pyro, to just because of the long distances to uh, refuel and rearm everywhere, but no word on when the Anvil Liberator is coming to Star Citizen. Definitely, this is definitely a fleet vessel. You definitely, I mean, you can buy it as a single person, but this is more or less meant for fleets. Anvil Legionnaire. This is basically a sort of it's a sort of a drop ship but it's actually more or less meant as a boarding ship for you so you can actually go ahead and dock with other ships that are hostile and then basically enter them with a party of marines so like the so basically you could think of this as the space version of the liberator where the liberator's job is to drop a whole bunch of marines on the ground to engage with ground targets this is supposed to deploy a whole team a bunch of marines to engage to board a ship and engage in a, a, bo a boarding action so very cool very much a unitasker but it is a very cool ship you could potentially use it as a drop ship but it's very much meant for as a uh, boarding ship not something i would recommend unless you have a whole bunch of friends who uh, do fps combat because again it's kind of very much a unique tasker, and it's meant to get other people into combat, not necessarily for you to fly around and do stuff. 
Lastly, we have a ship that's been in development for quite a long time. That's been stuck in concept for at least, I would say, almost going on a decade. Not a decade, close to a decade, though, at least. And that's the Animal Crucible. Basically, this is a flying uh, workshop for repairing other ships. There is actually a, I believe this in the back is the uh, where the hangar bay is. So your ship is supposed to come down, land in that hangar bay, it seals up, and then they can uh, work on your ship. The mechanics in the ship can work on it as in an enclosed environment, or it can open up repair arms and then repair larger ships um, out in the open. But really, this ship is going to be another one of those ships that's going to be forever in development or for quite a long time because repair, refuel, and rearm mechanics aren't really fully fleshed out yet. So that's, a ship, that's a, definitely a ship you're going to have to wait a long time for. And that's it for Anvil Day. Unfortunately, I really can't say I recommend any of the ships on sale today as a hard recommend. Anvil really doesn't have starter ships, and a lot of their ships that are, have been made are kind of unitaskers for things that we don't have in-game yet. Carrick's a lot of fun. I will say, if you want us now for a ship, if you want to save up for a ship to own in game to have fun with, Carrick's definitely got my seal of approval. It's a fun ship to have fun around with, especially if you have a group of people. And well, Terrapin's a cute little ship. It's fun to uh, fly around and just for uh, fun to do uh, exploration. And I will say, the Gladiator is a lot of fun if you want to have a um, if you want to attack larger ships. Especially for the events that CIG runs, uh, it's very useful for attacking some of the larger ships that appear in those events. And actually, in the uh, the only ship I possibly could recommend is the Arrow. If you're going into a dog, if you're going into the light fighter role, you might want to pick up an Arrow. But I would rather pick up the Gladius over the Arrow, if mainly because with the Gladius. It is a, the Gladius of the two is the is the ship that's going to be a Squadron Forty Two, so the Gladius is the Gladius is getting a lot of love and attention, and it might be a little bit before they get back to the Arrow to fully flesh it out. So of the two, um, Arrow is not a bad choice if you like the if you really do like the Arrow over the Gladius, go for it. But if you're on the fence between the Gladius and the Arrow, go for the Aegis Dynamics uh, Gladius because it has a bit more. Uh, it has a, it's going to be a lot more uh, updated, and, I'll, and it's going to be kept up to, uh, up to snuff a little bit more for the Squadron 42 release. And that's really it for uh, Star Citizen. I am not going to be uh, releasing uh, any more videos until Sunday. For uh, And then Sunday, we'll catch the last day of Drake Interplanetary's uh, Defense Con. And there's going to be no new ships really there at Defense Con this year uh, because they're going to be releasing the concept sale for the Drake Ironclad. So who knows when that's going to be finished. It looks like it's going to be one of those larger ships that's not going to be finished for quite a while. So who knows when that's going to get released, uh, but we'll, be at, we'll at least be at Defense Con to like walk around and see all of Drake's unique ships. But... We actually managed to wrap up Anvil Day quite a lot sooner than I expected, which is good. Don't want to keep you too long on these videos, and it's time to say this is Lock OS signing out from Star Citizen, and I'll see you Sunday, where we'll go over Defense Gone. Bye.